way to swim out of any self-doubt. Cut out the negativity, focus on the positives. Stack your wins. Take action. Take massive f***ing action. Like, go do something. Self-doubt can creep in. Don't let it creep in. Like, accept it and then change it. Don't let it take control. It'll come into your head. It'll find a space, you know? But, like... Get it out of there. <laughs> it's like a relative, you know? Came too long. Way too long. Way too long. You don't want to deal with it, but you have to, you know? Right. <laughs> and that's the key. Welcome to the Unfiltered Podcast. I'm your host, Raf, and this is my co-host, Sahir the Engineer. Yo. Yo, bro. How are you doing? What up, bro? Chilling, man. Chilling. How are you? Pretty good. Man, let's kick off this episode with the main question of the episode. Of course. Um, so my question to you is, man, um, do you remember a time when you felt self-doubt? Oh, my God. Do I remember a time? You're right. <laughs> yeah. Um, one part, one time, at least, that jumps out at me especially with this creative stuff you know mm -hmm. it's all like it's very much like is this gonna work or is this not right but this one was to a kind of different degree because it was a jingle mm -hmm. uh for i'll leave the you know leave the details out of it but it was for um <clears throat> a business out in san jose mm -hmm. and it's a radio jingle it was a radio jingle and it was mm -hmm. also meant to become something online as well something that could work on instagram TikTok, mm -hmm. facebook anywhere yeah. they wanted um a long form commercial they also wanted short snippets and then they also wanted this radio jingle it's, you know so it had to work on multiple uh i guess work in multiple mediums uh the self-doubt really kicked in though <clears throat> when uh after we had shot the commercial all of the shooting was done um and it was being edited and i still had no jingle oh. so at that <laughs> point uh i remember my the director that i was working with was sending me the roughs of what he was cutting up and yeah still nothing and i remember at that time just like taking a walk outside many weeks for mm -hmm. many weeks uh just racking my head yeah. and uh thank you to the person who was uh you know uh putting me in charge of this because they had incredible patience while i uh essentially just worked until i found the inspiration to come up with a jingle mm -hmm. so that was a that was a significant moment of like am i gonna do be able to do this or not right and in this music thing uh i think the work gets done very fast mm -hmm. in terms of being in front of the equipment and stuff coming out right it's the it's the becoming a vessel becoming a conduit of mm -hmm. dope dopeness to you know come through right. that's the problem <laughs> and that's something that i think when you're doing something new for the first time it's just uh yeah it's just natural to feel that. Sorry, this wasn't the first time I did it, but this was the first time I did something of of that nature because this person wanted it in three different languages and they wanted all that in one track. And I was just like, I don't know <laughs> if I can, if I could do three languages in one, you know? And mm -hmm. so I ended up doing three different, you know, songs, uh -huh. uh, essentially in three different languages. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah. Nice. So. That was its own uh, mountain, but I think at least it got done. But yeah, the level of um, uncertainty was significant. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. What do you think made you feel uh, that self-doubt at that time? Just like, just it, it just being, well, that, the fact that uh, he wanted three uh, languages in one song. Mm -hmm. So for, I would say the first part of those weeks, like the first two weeks, was me trying that and it just wasn't cracking you mm -hmm. know any which way i was going at it and i'm like playing my uh scratch instrumental as you know just on repeat mm -hmm. just not working mm -hmm. and the more and more that you're just sitting there it's not working you know the self-doubt just is gross right and it just continues to be like was this something you were supposed to agree to mm -hmm. and then it turns out what i delivered was actually three times more mm -hmm. than what this person uh, actually charged me with. Right. So if anything, they got a deal for waiting as long as they waited. Yeah. Because then they got to rotate three different jingles. 
mm. you know, on the radio. That helps. And that, oh, man, you're reaching three different demographics at that point. Yeah. Uh, specific ones. Nice. So I think there was, you know, me also learning a lot. You know, I learned a lot in that process. Mm -hmm. uh, but the self-doubt part, it's uh, when you're doing something of that nature, when somebody's asking you to really step outside of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. I think there is a moment there where the engine switches to idle, you know, mm -hmm. and it just now it's just hang, we're just hanging out for a second. Would you call that imposter syndrome at that point? I don't know if I'm ever I say, OK, so I don't want to call it arrogance, but I'm never going to question what's been put in front of me mm. or what's been given to me. So I don't feel like I am. Uh, I think imposter syndrome has to deal has to do with you feeling like you don't deserve what you are getting right or it's yeah, like, sort of like or am that, i the right person for this right or that you are given the job mm -hmm. and that you're working through it and you're still wondering like or you might be found out right, that like right, oh you right. actually don't know anything that you're <laughs> talking about or whatever <laughs> right. um man no at that point no i i knew that i could make songs you know right and i know that i can like i can work auto tune pretty well mm -hmm. so i could get this thing done it's just the right content right mm -hmm. is that that part the big big asterisk because this person is commissioning me for this work and mm -hmm. uh they're liable to not you know close out the deposit if they don't like what i'm pitching here you know mm -hmm. so uh that that sort of uncertainty is like it's always nerve-wracking right i think for people who are selling their art yeah uh yeah. but then it went through and it went through with fi flying colors right you know and they yeah, I'll tell you more about that off camera, but like very big, very uh, uh, big learning experience for me. For that sure. makes sense. Yeah. Uh, self-doubt included. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. A lot of times like self-doubt uh, shows its face when like uh, we have fear of failure. You know, um, there was a study by University of Texas, Austin, and yeah. they found that 70 percent of people have gone through at least a certain stage in their life where they were like fearing failure, you know, fear of failure. Oh, like, bro, that's, can yeah. I really do this? Is yeah, this going to yeah. work out the way we want? And, um, you know, that leads to self doubt, you know, I, I felt that too myself. I've struggled with self doubt throughout my life, you know, like in different stages, you know, sure. um, and I've grown through it, you know, at, right, at different right. times I've, uh, tried my best to learn and like improve every time, you know, but right. like, it's like every time there's a little more improvement and then it happens like there's self-doubt again and then you improve a little more well, because you're going you into just new going. spaces right yeah, yeah, you're, yeah you're moving into new levels mm -hmm. and there's whole new heights that you have to adjust right. to so to speak right yeah, yeah. As, and like i think a lot of entrepreneurs will like um a lot i think i believe a lot of entrepreneurs have the similar type of experience because entrepreneurs are trying different things you know at, at like young ages too you know right uh like when you're in your 20s like i remember when i was in my 20s it yeah. just felt like yo i'm an entrepreneur you know i got this you know this is all gonna work out in your 20s you have this different idea of entrepreneurship you know but then well, as you what was that idea of that idea that like um oh this will be uh fast cash you know or like i could figure this out like pretty fast like i can you sell know? anything yeah i can of sell shit. this shit <laughs> i can make this right and like this the, you know the uh, we're gonna be successful super fast you know okay but that's i think na naivete or yeah no yeah. that is very naive yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah that's like in your early you know entrepreneurship yeah, you journey because like the ideas at the beginning feels like wow all of this shit is gonna You're work like wide-eyed you know? really. yeah, yeah, yeah 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 and then um and then you do some of the stuff and those things don't work out and then you learn that oh shit oh yeah you know these things require a little more time they requires more patient patience uh -huh. you know um all this stuff you know comes up and uh i felt the same way you know um in my in my 20s uh i was you know i was in kansas city i was in the heart of the u.s and okay. i was trying to build that business like in healthcare right. and i wasn't even right. from a healthcare background you know um uh, but my business partner was so like that that gave me confidence and i thought that i could i could sell i could learn how to sell yeah. uh, a healthcare product you know service to to like uh hospitals and healthcare institutions uh -huh. and like that that business didn't work out you know that was one of my first failures you know in the business world in the entrepreneurship world and it came pretty early um and nice. at that time it was like it felt like i, I had to stop that at, at one point like i i pushed that for like two to three years at least uh -huh. and then i had to like stop and accept that this is like 
I need to learn a little more and there has to be more growth until right. I could do this one. Right. So then I had to go take um, a job, you know, like I, I took a job in, in, in the tech world in IT because my background was in that space, you know, so sure. I was able to do that. Nice. Um, while trying, you know, and working on other side hustles, working on business, but like other ideas, right. you know, eventually I was able to take that healthcare service idea and move it to a different industry and pivot to the tech world and, yeah, you know, yeah. sell a similar service. Yeah. But that was, that came afterwards, you know, that right. came um, after much growth. But you're I, utilizing your experience. Yeah, yeah, throughout. I had to, yeah, I had to tell, my, tell myself that we're going to use this experience, you know, this is not yeah. going to be wasted time. And that's where I, I, yeah, it never is when you're putting your honest foot forward, right. I think. Yeah, I absolutely. I think the, the things are lining up around you and you're putting your, uh, genuine intent out there mm -hmm. I think you're getting good things out of it whether it works out or not for the long time is a separate thing right but you can always that's really dope to know sorry go ahead yeah you're no you're good continue. um yeah and so I remember that feeling of like when we had to accept that this is not gonna work mm. and we got to move cities to you know work on a corporate job um, in a different industry Damn. It, it felt like um, it felt like defeat. It felt like, okay, this is not happening, Shit. you know? Yeah. But then you have to accept it, you know? And so once we accepted it and we we're ready to move forward, um, moved on, moved forward, learned new skills, took some courses, started searching for new jobs in the, you know, different, you know, tech industry. Right. Um, but during that period, that transitional phase, you know, like those few months of like figuring all this stuff out, because there's a whole moving out of state thing too you know what i mean it's Man, like, that's a whole it's a thing. lot of yeah what? it's a lot yeah. of things right yeah yeah at that time it felt i felt self-doubt you know it was like for uh, it felt like um you know oh man i have all these grandiose ideas am i going to be capable of executing on them like sure. or or is this life now like I chase like corporate jobs and you know what I'm saying? Like, am I going to chase the corporate ladder? Yeah. Or what the fuck is going to happen <laughs> with my business side? Like I'm an entrepreneur at heart, you know, like, right. Right. That, that self doubt was of creeping course. in, you know? And, uh, I, I, w I wasn't happy like for many months, like I was happy in a way that I had other solutions and, but then I was also unhappy that I had to let go of a, like a different identity. You know what I mean? Sure. 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 Yeah. And that's, it's, uh, yeah, that's the part where you, I guess you feel like a failure because there's a, right. a part of you that wanted that side of you to work out, but now you have to shed that. And yeah. I guess like, you know, assume something right. new. Yeah. But it's still like there's bits of that that remain with you. Yeah, right? absolutely. And like, yeah, and I didn't know that at the time. You of know? course not. No, this and is all in, in yeah, hindsight. Yeah, fast forward like an year or so after that, yeah. um, after that move and change in lifestyle and everything, we I started the next business like within the next year, you know? like Nice. And that one was in the tech space. That one was something that I could definitely sell and work with people and right. grow. So it was, it was uh, you know, it was all um, meant to be, you know? But it's hard to know that, like, when you're going through the shit and when you yeah, just, no. like, don't know what's coming next, you know? Right, right. It's that fear of failure, the fear of uncertainty, you know, that those are the things that creeps in, you know? Um, also, people may feel self-doubt when uh, they want perfectionism. You know, they they want, like, the best version of themselves out, uh, you know, to, to the world, you know, expressed to the world. But then... Yeah, yeah they have to go through some growth that they don't know about. So it's, that's why it's not perfect yet. You know no, what I mean? Right. And it'll right. never be perfect. But like, I do remember my younger self wanting, uh, the perfect story, you know, the perfect way, um, you know, wanting perfectionism, you know what I mean? Right. Right. So it helps sometimes. Bec and, and the reason why, you know, I valued perfectionism was that, um, at the beginning times of my career, perfectionism helped. Like being a perfectionist uh, while building my first website was yeah. like it helped because like people came to, you know, people came to their website and was like, wow, this is dope. They noticed. They joined. Yeah. And right. they became part of the, you know, website and part of the community that we were building. And right. so it helped. It rewarded me. But then later as you grow, it just you learn that like perfectionism is not going to work out. You know, like, yeah, that's you, nothing is perfect in life, no, you know. No. But it's 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 like a hard pill to swallow, you know, especially in your 20s. Uh, my For me, especially in my younger self, like it was, uh, you know, I had to let go of perfectionism, you know. Right. And 
it's also a very common feeling i think a lot of people feel that same thing yeah you know? i think like i think more so uh you have a you have a vision of what you will look like or what or how you will present yourself right uh be it a product or be it um even as a service or anything that you're gonna you know kind of reach out to people with and connect to people with and contribute yeah. with yeah you have an ideal version of that uh and you know early on you think you've achieved an ideal version mm -hmm. and somebody comes along and tells you hey you know you didn't do this that and the third right. and it's like Ugh. right and then you come back you did this that and the third and you forgot four five and six now so like the learning experience keeps going i have spoken to people in my family people friends of mine that are you know somewhat uh achieving at high levels and you know they continue to learn and mm -hmm. they continue to be students there's a level of imperfection mm -hmm. that they have become comfortable with right that they will allow absolutely and like you know work with and not obsess yeah. over right yeah and i think that just comes with with experience i don't think you can right you can talk to anyone and yeah. convince them earlier than they're meant to realize this true that like I ch man, like, and sorry, not to be on a tangent here, but like, s sometimes artists, man, like, ugh, like they'll they'll hit me with the same song, like months after, it'll be three months, four months after I've given them like the fourth draft, and it'll be radio silence, right? But then they'll come back, hey, bro, remember that one? You know, like, can you pull that back up? Like, I I want to finish that. And they'll send me new assets, you know, mm -hmm. and like, yeah, I mean, I charge for this kind of stuff, you know, like every time you give me new stuff, like this is a new thing I have to mix in now. It's a new element and they don't mind and they just keep coming back. Like I still have like mm -hmm. so many songs that are just in like purgatory mm -hmm. and they come back and they come back after so many. And I'm like, damn, like y'all are past this one record and not to be not, not to disrespect your song, but like man like you can wrap this up man and you can get this out and we can move on because the only way you're gonna learn and be different is if you move on and right. like you find some new experiences mm -hmm. to shape out your character um you find new song new beats at least oh gosh so yeah, yeah. that that perfectionist thing really does hit as uh, it strikes a different chord with me as a mix engineer right because i i know for a fact there isn't anything as perfect yeah i just know there's really really good you know and right that's what's you know making its way to the top yeah that's right and then even to uh, this day and age with social media it's like uh, a little more uh it's a lot worse now you know oh with, hell yeah um comparison you know like people compare uh, each other with each other you know and also um that that feeds into the perfectionism you know that that because like online everybody's showing their highlight reel you know and so one can feel that their lives aren't as dope as XYZ. Yeah. You know, just because, like, they're showing the highlights, they're not showing the full picture, you know? No, not only the full picture, but mm -hmm. then they're editing that picture. Right. And right. they're editing that picture to crazy degrees now. Right, right. And I don't know, like, I don't, and no disrespect to people who are using these things to, like, be on social media the way they want to be on social media. More power to you. Mm -hmm. I have no ill will. But Facetune has really fucked me up, man. Like, I didn't know that this was a thing. Mm. And I didn't know that you could, to what extent, you could really manipulate the image. And then mm. now with AI and all of that, you know, it's just way different. So, yeah, yeah like, you're going to see perfect things now out mm. there. Perfectly symmet symmetrical, you know. Right, right. Things that uh, just are unnaturally balanced. Right. And there is something to that mm -hmm. that I think uh, is just whack <laughs> yeah it's a, it's a it's a big issue and uh uc berkeley did a research um and they found out that 75 percent of people on social media compare like do com you know compare themselves with others no, of on course social. yeah and like that's a I lot that's that, a huge yeah. number 75 yeah, percent is sum. huge you know yeah. and s that aids into self-doubt you know that feeds into self-doubt and makes people doubt themselves and like maybe question their self-confidence or question you know? the dope things that they have in their life yeah there's mm -hmm. not dope enough yeah or that it's not good enough or like it's not what i could utilize and mm -hmm. really take advantage of in the moment right and like i really do appreciate i guess living you know living life pre-social media right because it was easier to keep your head down 
right and appreciate what you had like right in front of you bro if i showed you what i started with in making music Mm -hmm. like the equipment (laughs) oh my god (laughs) like i don't think anybody this at this day and age like you just wouldn't be able to do that because people would always be in your ear about taking pictures and sharing it Mm -hmm. and once you did that people would flame you for like not having this kind of equipment or look at what you're doing here and that I, I i felt like i had more like just you know just like fearlessness mm. of like just putting stuff out right and not knowing if it was and it just wasn't good enough for sure now i look back on it all that stuff just wasn't good enough but it was really good the fact that you know i didn't I didn't look up all the time and compare and be like oh man i'll have that you know right. this isn't even worth doing you know mm-hmm. and it's just like nah like you got to find your way. And I think sometimes like the brokest you were like the fun, the more fun you had kind of, you mm-hmm. know, just trying to figure this thing out. Right. It's exciting. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Sorry. So, but you're right about the social media um, yeah. comparison problem mm-hmm. and which like kind of feeds into this idea of things being perfect when in reality they're not. Right. One of the things that has helped me, um, uh, you know, deal with self doubt is, uh, acknowledging the self doubt, you know, acknowledging sure. that okay, currently I'm feeling this way, yeah. And what that does is removes the power from the self doubt. You know, it, it gives me back the power of my own mind because because sure. if I can accept that I'm currently feeling doubts about, you know, a particular venture that I'm working on or something I'm working on, then it gives me the answer uh, to what I need to do next. You know, what I need to do next is like deal with the self doubt, you yeah, know, because yeah, yeah. if I don't deal with it, then it'll just come nagging back. It'll know? just, it'll just stay there. there. Right. Right. Yeah. But the fact that you, you acknowledge that you're going through this, right. It's control. Yeah. And yeah, now you, you can address it. Get back. that. Control. It's not like you're in your head and oblivious to the fact that you are right. Like, this is you're just doubting yourself yeah like you yeah. need to stop but the fact that you know that yeah yeah and then if you can expect it then you can deal with it you know otherwise it, it'll surprise you you know right and so like i guess it's easier for me to say uh, in my 30s but to my younger self that's what i would i would tell him is that um you know expect the self-doubt don't like get confused when yeah you're self, yeah when you're doubting yourself because like right. that's one of the worst feelings is like oh f- fuck you know i'm doubting myself and then uh, shit, uh, I'm probably not good enough because because I'm doubting myself. Yeah, like, like look gr- look at all these other people; they're confident. Right, right, right. You know, why greats, am I not? That? The greats don't doubt themselves. Yeah, yeah. You know things like that, yeah. and, and you think you're incorrect. not great. <laughs> they're very incorrect. Incorrect. <laughs> like in your twenties, you don't know that. You know, no. you think the greats are you think fucking dope. Yeah, yeah. Like and especially like for us, like our era is when Kanye was on stage telling. Like no, Taylor Swift shouldn't win, shouldn't have won that. You know, right, Beyonce right. should have won that. And you're like watching that, and you're like, wow, <laughs> what kind of confidence does this guy have? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, uh, he's on something else. Uh, what? Is, <laughs> yeah, which is a lot of Hennessy. Yeah, and then yeah. like today's generation will be like that same story. They'll be like, oh, during our time, Will Smith went on stage and punched somebody <laughs> the on the shit fucking out of face. For somebody, Chris Rock. <laughs> Chris yeah. Rock smacked the shit out of him. <laughs> no, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, you know when you see shit like that, you have like you, you uh, one has like the tendency to think that that's like normal or like oh that person on TV Kanye or whoever it is Steve Jobs or whatever you know like yeah. look at that person Mark Cuban he's so confident he never probably has any, any problems doubts. with d- self doubt or confidence sure, you know sure. but yes they do like they worked through it that's why they're in this place right now right, you know right and they probably deal with it in a different way now yeah and and experience it a different way right probably. yeah and every every human has this feeling you know it's, sure it's a human thing you know yeah. and so the first thing you can you should do is pro- acknowledge it you know yeah acknowledge that you're having this certain doubt and from there you can identify the triggers right. um, if you can I- identify what's causing this self-doubt like it's easier to deal with it you know okay that's like yeah. step number two you know um, identify the triggers sometimes it'll be like people around you or like the environment you're in or like um, you know it's, it's reminding you of past experiences you know and so it's like at those times for me it's best to just like sleep on it you know just say you know what fuck it you know today we're not gonna do this yeah we're gonna say no to these thoughts and we're just gonna go we're just gonna go to sleep yeah we're just gonna go <laughs> let to our sleep. subconscious think about this right <laughs> and then when i wake up tomorrow morning i'll be fresh and then right. we'll deal with and it and we'll you know? think on it or we'll act on it then right yeah absolutely um 
a lot of times, you know, when I've faced self-doubt, um, it was important for me to challenge the narrative, you know, like really question why I'm thinking about this, you know, why am I doubtful? You know, it's, it's important to like challenge that narrative, you know, in your head. Right. And sometimes it's not enough to hear, hear it from your own self. Like for me, especially, it's not enough sometimes to hear myself telling me that, no, bro, you got this, you know? Yeah. Sometimes I need outside validation. I need somebody outside of my head to go, go ahead and tell me of course. that it will be fine. Of you course. Know? And so if that's the case, you know, with uh, somebody f- facing the self-doubt, then go talk to a friend, you know, talk to a friend, spouse, you mentor. know significant other mentor yeah um have a word no absolutely i think getting feedback is absolutely necessary and i think i don't think anybody is meant to be an island anyone out there reach out like just mm-hmm. don't hesitate to just say what's up you yeah. know i was thinking about this i was thinking about that what do you think of that right and it can be the most random things mm-hmm. and texting is great for that cuz mm-hmm. it doesn't pressure people for a response right away but you right. can still put the the line out um i don't think uh i don't think it's wise to try to counsel yourself mm-hmm. all the time right you need like you need outside feedback 100 percent gauge yeah. you know like get Absolutely. a reality check or a temperature check from people that are not in your own head <laughs> right absolutely yeah it's important uh during these times that you know what you just mentioned is so important to reach out to other people because like there's a feeling that like because i'm doubting myself or because i'm suffering through certain confidence issues m- m- my friends won't get me you know because like yeah. they seem like they're fine you know yeah. like they're going ahead with they their lives like they have it all together yeah. yeah how come i don't you know and so it's difficult to talk to anybody at that time but it's important to talk to them that's probably the most important time to talk to them yeah you know? yeah absolutely because everybody will relate to this you know everybody will be like yeah i feel, feel the same way you know no, like, 100 percent. most of the time i feel that same fucking way but <laughs> you don't you can't tell you know and it's just it at the very least it'll feel good to know that you're not alone yeah in feeling how you're feeling mm-hmm. and it's not uh out of this world right to be going through whatever you're going through mm-hmm. yeah absolutely um so yeah challenging the ne- uh, narrative is super important Number four would be to practice compassion, you know? Uh, so if you can if you can ask yourself what advice you'd give somebody else in the same situation uh, and then give that advice to that, you know, fictional person, uh, you'll probably get the answer that you need. You know yeah. what I mean? And that's yeah. like practicing compassion because then you're kind of putting yourself in another person's shoes, getting out, outside of your head. Right. And then, and in a way, it's like th- that person is just like you sure they're having the same experience they're doing the same thing but your advice is always going to be way better you know sometimes we give better advice to other people than our own selves yeah you know? absolutely so it's like this is a way to like practice that you thinking know thinking that compassion. yeah I, I guess you do give sometimes yeah you do give advice uh better advice i guess to people that are not yourselves mm-hmm. thinking that they'll be able to better utilize Right. whatever you're saying because you're not capable of that mm-hmm. and it's just not true <laughs> right, right whatever you're doling out to the world you can also you know mm-hmm. use apply <laughs> yeah, yeah and yeah. apply yep absolutely um for me one of my biggest uh things that has helped me over the years is like um is uh visualizing success and affirming the goals you know affirming that i'm capable affirming that all this will work out and the reason why that uh helped me is because like as an entrepreneur i've tried a fuck ton of things i've done uh, like i've done different kinds of businesses i've you know gone into different industries and every time i enter these spaces i i like dive deep right and i learn and i like um put myself in the middle of the people who are already doing the same thing that i'm trying to do sure. so it, it's like i put myself in into these challenging situations and a lot of times um, it can it can um, garner more questions, you know, instead of answers, you know, because like right. if I'm searching too much, you know, there's too many questions, too many voices, there's, too many things happening. There's a lot. There's too many perspectives, too many perspectives, you know. Yeah. yeah. And um, and so during those times, it's important for me to ground myself and like not 
think about all these things you know like it's good for me to experience these new experiences but then at the same time um ground myself you know and into my own beliefs and my own values you know because right, right. there's too many voices right right so one of the things that i did um i would say, i think this has been a decade ago uh, a decade <laughs> ago okay. i recorded um audios of myself like i, I recorded myself uh-huh. um talking to myself um and it, it's it's things uh you know it's like affirmations it's like things that i want to hear from me you know about myself it's um uh, it was you know sentences like um um i i got this i i had it all along and i i still got this you know sentences like that um okay. you know that you know gives me more self confidence gives me more you know gets rid of the self doubt you know right, things that right, i right. want to hear at that time okay i can like just put on earbuds and hear myself saying those things you know holy what I mean? shit okay and i did this like a decade ago and it has helped me like this whole time cuz sometimes when i'm going through the um, highs and lows of the journey um there are days when i need to hear those words you know where i need to hear uh words that you know instill more confidence words that make me feel like i you know i i'm capable of doing more sure um one of the things that um helped me immensely was like a few years ago um when i was an anr at sony i had to go to india for some time you know i had to yeah. go live there with my wife you know holy shit and i'm a first gen immigrant in the us you know i moved out of south asia to to, to america be here, you know yeah. and so this was a great opportunity um and you know mumbai is is like their hollywood you know what right, i mean like it's right, dope right it's a great city so everything is dope like the about the opportunity you know it's sony it's uh bombay one of the biggest cities in the world you know right right um one of the most diverse cities too like right, you meet right. so many it's people there it's a metropolitan there. yeah it's so different vibe. you know yeah it's beautiful like it's a great opportunity but first gen immigrant moved to us it was like uh oh i got to now move to another country uh yeah. for uh, you know for however long at that time i didn't know how how long this would last sure but then covid came and you know Had to things come back changed to that. But, yeah, um, yeah but yeah you know so it was like confusing um i knew i wanted it you know the the opportunity but then there were like different questions you know right but one of the affirming voices that i had recorded a long time before that was yeah. um i go towards as uncertainty uncertainty is where new opportunities come to me you know that's like one of the voices sure. that i've recorded sure and i heard that around that time i remember that feeling and it was just like it clicked it was like yes uncertainty that's where new opportunities are yeah like where i'm at right now we could just be doing the same thing for the next number of years and i don't know what it'll lead to but like uncertainty you have no idea like what it'll lead to you yeah I mean? like you're it's it open be, yeah it's wide open it could be anything and around that time i also like called one of my buddies who's um who's a who's a major artist in in um, thailand and indonesia Okay. Like he's a he's a big artist in Southeast Asia. Yeah. But he's originally from Canada. So huh. I called him and I was like, "Yo, you know, you grew up in Canada, but now you moved to Southeast Asia. He's got roots there and stuff, but like still it's a big difference, you know?" Yeah. Yeah. So I asked him like, "What do you think, bro? Like I got this new opportunity." And he was like, "Bro, you he told me the same thing, you know. He was like, "You could be doing exactly what you're doing where you are right now." but you could do those same things in India in Bombay in like the heart of like this particular uh, you know opportunity that you're right. going towards right and you could be kicking ass like in a different environment you know you you right. never know what could happen right and i was like all right that's it you know that's all i needed that's all i needed <laughs> you know and so sometimes these affirming voices yeah. get rid of self doubt you know right right So in that example it was my own voice and it was the voice of my buddy you know and also my wife was like obviously giving me more confidence course, in this opportunity yes, you know yes. cuz she also wanted to travel Shout out to the wives <laughs> yeah she wanted to see India as well and right. experience that and Right so yeah so and then it ended up we had a great time there you know it was the experience of a lifetime you know it was dope of course, it was amazing dope. I improved my Hindi uh, like I was able to <laughs> talk and learn more you know right, of the right. language and the local cultures cuz there's embraced, so many over there. You embraced all the all the <laughs> yeah. new shit, yeah. right? And 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 the new food, oh my god. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the food was special. That could be its own pod. Mm -hmm. Um but like you you uh you didn't shy away from right. the uncertainty. Right. Right, right. Nice. Yeah, and it, it led to good things, you know. And so like nice. I think that's like a major key is like 
visualize success and like affirm it you know affirm that this is happening right. you got this like this is a no brainer this is not a problem you right, know you, right. you've done it before right. you can fucking do it again you know so if you can affirm that to yourself that's awesome and then tell your friends to affirm it for you you know ask them the right questions they'll affirm it for you you know right, and right, if they're right. still not affirming it for you then tell them like bro i need to hear this <laughs> can you tell me this right now fuck, can you man. just say this god yeah. damn <laughs> <laughs> yep uh, <laughs> and then during these times man uh it's important to surround yourself with positive positive energy you know like uh positive shows on tv uh you know not the murder shows you know maybe like friends you know Jesus. maybe yeah, yeah, how yeah. i met your mother you know yeah, like yeah. the office you know like keep fun it. things you know light lighthearted stuff on keep tv it you know yeah keep it light yeah and then like uh what i like to do is also listen to like um motivational speakers and you know they have so much content on youtube right go to a positive podcast about health and wellness you know right. you're going to learn so much like it's just going to take your mind out of that you know agreed And it's like what you take in it, you got to be conscious of that right because it does affect like how you internalize and yeah. how you live yeah absolutely for sure for me like my go to podcast when i'm going through uh, moments of self doubt or going through uh, anxieties is uh, mel robbins has a dope podcast she talks about really amazing mindfulness things and uh, she has a lot of research and science backed um uh, you know episodes okay. she brings in the experts it's it's really dope i've learned so much from mel robbins um okay and then uh talk about mel robbins one of the things that mel robbins talks about is um her one of her main books that she released recently is called the high five habit uh -huh. and the concept is that like we grow up uh high fiving people you know like when we're playing sports or like with parents like high five high five yeah. like we have yeah. very positive reinforcement with high fives you know what i mean right right so she wants uh, she suggests people to like take control over their lives by uh high fiving yourself in the mirror in the morning like just to give your <laughs> mental like boost you know like a <laughs> boom high five and you're starting the day you know okay it's really interesting and like she she was saying that this idea seems stupid like when she first thought of it she was like this is stupid but then she did a <laughs> bunch of research and she ended up writing a book on it because she wow. found so much research on the power of that you know and our mirror neurons in our brain like really triggers gets triggered in a positive way when it gets that high five you know holy shit i'm going to go high five the mirror yeah wow. it's it's Let's it's amazing happens. like she suggests <laughs> to have this habit in the morning like after you brush your teeth you look at yourself in the mirror and high five you know <laughs> <laughs> good job to here <laughs> yeah. great scrub <laughs> yeah and she it's really nice. interesting you know i tried it out and it's like oh, yeah shit. the first few days feels like a really dumb idea feels strange. Like, what am i doing you're right but like you know day five day 10 it's like you're kind of smiling at yourself like you're like <laughs> kind of laughing like, at how silly you are but right. it's kind of like triggering those positive feelings you know but you're starting off positive yes absolutely so it's most important yeah surrounding yourself with positive energy is like the key you know right so what i was suggesting is a number of podcasts that help me get out of this mindset right yeah um another podcast uh the the school of greatness by lewis house dope podcast he brings on amazing guests uh -huh. and it's full of knowledge it'll, it'll take you out of like any, any negative thoughts any anything that you're in you're taken out of it cuz you're listening to these conversations that are like deep you know like they're not like high level they're like deep convos Holy you know shit. Okay. about like life and damn, pursuit damn. of happiness and like freaking mindfulness and just everything whatever you need it's right, there right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> damn okay yeah um i love jay shetty's podcast too i think um you know he brings a very interesting experience into this podcast world um being a monk in his past you know I think there's a lot of value to the, you know, guests that he brings on. He even brings on like artists, musicians, Big Sean. Yeah, I saw Russ. Russ. Yeah, yeah, I saw Russ with him. That I think was, you might have linked me to that one. Yeah. Yeah. That was a dope episode. So yeah. these are things that like pulls me out of that, you know? Obviously Joe Rogan's got like podcasts on any topic that you want, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um so those are really dope. Uh Sean Mike Kelly, he's got a dope podcast. He's got mm -hmm you know like he's the number one podcast in in the marketing genre nice dope stuff like knowledge that you can take and use and do something with you know right, right. great way to get out of self doubt or like any any type of confidence issues you know so yeah what is it number 6 i think maybe is um <laughs> <laughs> um number 6 i think is like um stack 
uh, your wins. You know, you got to stack your wins. When you're going through uh, phases in life when you, you have self-doubt, you got to stack all the wins that you've had in your life. You got to write them all down. Like, how many yeah. wins did I have? Yeah. Let me prove to myself. Because that's the best way to increase confidence. Prove to yourself. You know, you don't need other people's likes and other people to affirm these things to you, you know? Because, like, we, you know, with social media, we get so used to wanting outside, you know, outside validation, you know? Yeah. But the we win when it's intrinsic validation, you know, from within. Agreed. And, like, you know, that high five by Mel Robbins is, like, for that. Let's say intrinsic validation. Right, you know? right, right. Um, and it's, like... Uh, yeah, so like th that's this is these are great times to like write down a list of your wins in life because if you wanted to, you can find a hundred wins, you know, in your life. Like it yeah. could be f anything, like from learning how to ride a bike to like learning how to walk, you know, like these right. are difficult things at those ages, you know. No, what I document mean? everything. Yeah, yeah. Um, high school graduation, you know, like yep. these are important things in those stages in life, you know, and we, you know, seldom think about it. You know, we all we wonder like. Uh, we forget about all our wins, you know? No, yeah, because you're just so focused on the next challenge. Yeah. Yeah. It's good to, like, when you're having self-doubt, it's good to take a pause, write everything down, all your wins, and then the lessons you learn from each of these wins. Right. And then also list your failures, you know? Don't forget about the failures. Write down a list of failures. Right. And then lessons from each of them. And then the narrative that you, you want to take from that, you know? So I suggest, like, this is something that I've done. Um, I've done this a few years ago and I come to back to this habit from time to time. So I open up an Excel sheet uh, with three tabs. One tab is all the wins, you know, it's just wins. Right. And then the second tab is all the failures. And then the third tab is like the neutral experiences, you know, neutral things that are not really wins or failures, but those are like memorable moments in your life that, sure. you know, that weren't like necessarily a win or anything. It was just like fun or you know, something memorable, something dope. Um, so I made a list like that. And then in each of these tabs, uh, for the win uh, tab, I, I created like a column Man. for uh, the list of wins. Like, And then I went for 100, 100 wins in this list, all right? And then uh, <clears throat> the next column next to it is like what I learned from that experience, you know, what I'm taking out from this right. win. right. And then in the next uh, tab is the failures. List out 50 failures and then, or like, you know, 25 to 50. Don't go know? so hard with the yeah. failures. Don't go so hard. <laughs> yeah. Not 100. We don't need 100. Yeah. Trying to stack the wins, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So like yeah. list your failures that like hurt the most in life, you know? Right. And then right. the next column is wh what you learn from it. And then this one has a third column. And this third column is the narrative that you want to, write about this from now on you know like this failure that you had in your life what you learned from it and now the narrative that you are gonna say about this from here on like right this is the narrative you tell yourself you know it's like this part is super important because here you can take this failure and change the narrative into whatever you want you can turn it into a win right you know that's the third column the I narrative see. you know you gotta change it you gotta switch it you gotta make it better than what it was right you know? right right so if it was like a, <clears throat> a car accident let's say there was a car accident you know i've had this experience yeah. car accident hit and then it hits your bank you know it, it hurts your like bank. a mofo yeah there's there's huge issues that came from that this was a long time ago so there wasn't like uh, uh you know disposable income to take care of certain things huge failure at, at if what felt like a huge failure at that time but like the lessons learned from that was all right, uh, don't let that happen again. And these are the things you do to not sure. let that happen again. The narrative that came from that is that that car had to go because it was an old car. <laughs> After that, we got a new one. You nice. know what I'm saying? Like, it was a doper car. And it was so, time. Yeah, yeah, I'm more grateful right. for the new one. You know? And so, like, nice. that's a narrative's change. You know what I mean? Right, and this right. is super important. Um, sure. That's the second tab. And then the third tab is um, the neutral experiences, you know, the fun experiences that you've had in your life that weren't really wins or losses, but just dope experiences, you know, like right. first time you went camping in the woods let, and saw the stars, you know, or like uh, first time dad took you somewhere like to the game or to baseball or, right, right, you know, right. whatever those experiences are, like write those things down. Those aren't necessarily wins or losses, but it just gives you more confidence and you know gives you those positive feelings you of know? course yeah remind yourself you can do it yeah, yeah absolutely and you have done it yes exactly um yeah and so 
during these times it's important to disconnect from the negativity you know disconnect from social media you know take a break yeah. you know, the, it's it's important to like give yourself some self love some time to yourself call it to touch, out go, of it. go touch grass yeah go touch grass go to yeah. nature yeah. you know just experience life yeah yeah uh, on that same note you know it's it's also important to like um you know practice mindfulness practice meditation during these times yeah. cuz then it, it it stops you from thinking about things that you're you know worrying about you know yeah yeah it helps you change the narrative you know right and you know during these times you know i think the best thing that one can do is take action take massive fucking action you know it's time to like go um go hard on the goals that you actually want to do right and then as you go into those goals as you you know stack the more wins as you take little steps you know it it helps you overcome the self doubt you know yeah yeah it provides more uh more of a foundation for you to believe in yourself right yeah Absolutely. you got as you rinse repeat and you get into the process right right yeah it's a uh, one of the things that i've done in during these times is uh start writing a list of things that i can do right now yeah and then start doing them and start very small super small just cross them off and that just gives more confidence cuz again you're stacking your wins you agree know? man you're yeah just for trying sure to look at that no hell yeah like i like i just recently started jogging oh beautiful again this took like a 2 3 month hiatus there just wasn't going but then yeah as soon as i went back the first day like felt better yeah just felt like all right i did i did something you know that right. i was set out to do and i i noticed this about days that i exercise that they go considerably better because I just started out with this like right. victorious sort of vibe. That right, right. I hit that shit. Done. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So I, I would tell my younger self um, about these things, you know, about these uh, this list that we shared in this uh, episode, because it's important to like consider these feelings and you know not shut them out. You know, it's, yeah. it's too easy sometimes to quiet them out. Like just say, you know, fuck it, fuck or it, fuck ignore them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to hear this shit. Yeah. You know, I, I don't like. I don't like myself when I'm in this space. Right, right. I don't, I don't want to hear it. I deny know? their existence. Yeah, I deny it. <laughs> yeah. I, I say it's better to accept them of and course. then go deal with them. You of know. Of course. And, and it's like you deal with them with the ways that I uh, that we shared in this episode. You know. Yeah. Like, cut out the negativity focus on the positives you know yeah. stack your wins yeah and then you're gonna be in a better place you know and um take action take massive right. fucking action you know that's the best way to swim out of any self-doubt like go do something yeah yeah absolutely yeah this is i think great advice for a lot of people right now um are going through so many different changes you know like there is, um, you know, cost of living is getting higher for a lot of people. Oh, yeah. Um, ma many people are facing, like, um, you know, um, loss of jobs, you know, trying to look for new opportunities. Yeah. And, like, self-doubt can creep in, you know. And entrepreneurs are facing this, too, like, trying to find new customers, trying to expand their businesses. Self-doubt can creep in, you know. And I say, like, don't let it creep in. Like, don't don't let that shit get in your head. It's It's, like accept it and then change it you know don't don't let it take control you know that's that's right. the main thing it'll come it'll come into your head it'll find a space you know but like let it find that space deal with it and then get it'll and be gone get it out of there yeah get it yeah. out of there you know yeah. like it's like a you know it's like a it's like a relative you know came from another country like for fucking <laughs> too months. long yeah, like yeah. You, <laughs> way too long way too long you don't want to deal with it but you have to you know right <laughs> and that's the you know that's the key in that's all true. of this for sure um, man yeah so like you know more power to to all the people out there like grinding hustling or doing the shit yeah. every fucking day hell you yeah know? salute we're doing the same thing here at unfiltered you know so we feel you you know like <laughs> we're building a brand from the bottom up we're doing this thing because we believe in this brand like we believe in everything we're talking about here yes sir the reason why we're doing this is because like w we have kids you know i have a almost three-year-old i have a two-year-old <laughs> he has a one-year-old right, and right. we know that they're gonna grow up and like google us and if they find some content that adds value to their lives then we are winning you know and so if you get any value from this that's just the icing on the cake hell yeah and this is why we're doing this you know yeah and um for those of you you know who are in this journey with us um you know i appreciate you thank you for being here this is like uh what we've been working on throughout our whole lives you know honestly like 
we are both from the music industry. Um, you know, I'm a tech and music entrepreneur. Spent the past decade building a music brand and, um, you know, experienced numerous ups and downs building a music brand, a tech brand, uh, and then multiple different brands and ideas, side hustles. I've helped artists release over 300 songs and singles and music videos over this period. And we've learned from every single one of them, you know, and so all of that experience, all of those stories come down to this unfiltered podcast. Yeah. You know, this is this is what I was built for. Hell you know? yeah. And then this guy, Sahir, he's been <laughs> a sound engineer, an artist, uh, com a producer yep, for yep. the past two decades, you know, and yep. all those experiences working with numerous artists, numerous uh, musicians, uh, doing numerous jobs in the music industry, wearing different hats. It all adds up to this, you know, so uh, we appreciate you joining us in this journey uh, with the Unfiltered Podcast. Uh, and, yeah. Uh, thank you for being here. Thank you, Sahir, for Hell yeah, bro. being here every week. Yeah, bro, man. Oh yeah, till next time. Peace.